Hi this is Preeta and welcome to Dakshin Curry. I don't know how many of you are well versed with this ingredient called ragi which is also called as nachni. Now what we are going to do today is we are going to take a classic Karnataka recipe called kali mudde or ragi mudde and tweak it a little to make it into a evening snack. So to know more stay tuned. So let's see the ingredients which are required to make this snack. Half a cup of nachni flour, water to make the paste, one tablespoon of cooking oil, teaspoon each of mustard seeds, garlic, some coriander leaves and coriander stems, one teaspoon of urad dal, one teaspoon of jeera, one teaspoon of finely chopped green chilies, salt to taste, some curry leaves, and hing which is dissolved in water. So this recipe is divided into three steps, major steps you can say. First is making of a batter and then cooking it into a dough and then you have to steam it and then in the end you have to prepare the snack. So let's do the first step that is making of the batter. So I am taking the flour in a bowl here. And what I'll be doing is I've taken half a cup of flour so I'll be adding 1 cup of water in this. And firstly I'll just mix it all up ensure that there are no lumps you can also use a whisk if you want in the meanwhile what i'm going to do is i'm going to switch on the pan and heat it up on a low flame i'm going to drizzle very little oil in the pan very little just allow this to heat up in the meanwhile what we are going to do is we are going to flavor this batter with salt as required and if you want you can add hing now but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it later on like I told you in the classic recipe what happens is the main ingredients are only ragi flour and salt and water and they basically cook it till it's a nice dough so we are going to do that just tweak it a little so now you can see this is nicely mixed now you want to ensure that your pan is hot enough before you pour this into the into the pan. So let's see if our pan is hot enough. What we'll do is we'll just spread the oil that we have drizzled inside. Okay, it seems hot enough. Now at this point of time, what we are going to do is we are going to add this mixture that we have made. Let's pour this in. Now what we need to do is we need to keep on mixing until this batter is going to get cooked and resemble a dough. So this is going to take some time but you need to ensure that you keep on mixing so that there are no lumps. I usually like to add a little bit of crushed garlic at this stage, raw that too. But I am avoiding that today. I will be adding it in the end when we make the tempering, when we make the snack. As you can see the thickness starting to cook now once this mixture is completely ready what will happen is it's going to leave the sides of the pan and that's how you need to cook it now if you look at the classic recipe they actually boil the water and then add the flour and mix it but I think this is also another easy way to do it it also depends how much you're going to cook the ragi now what I'm going to do is I'm not going to cook it completely I'm just going to cook it till it's going to become a nice thick dough and the rest of the cooking is going to be done when it's going to get steamed so we'll just need to keep on mixing this now you need to ensure that most of the moisture is out because you're going to be rolling it into small balls lime sized balls So as you can see it's starting to leave the sides of the pan now at this point of time what I'm going to do is I'm going to grease a thali with little oil and what we'll do is we are going to add this onto the plate you just need to spread this it's going to be a little messy but it's worth it don't want to do any wastage now this is going to be still warm so what we are going to do is we are going to spread this and in the meanwhile what we will do is 
we have a kadhai here now obviously you can use a steamer if you have a steamer that's perfect but i don't have a steamer right now so what i'm going to do is i have a kadhai in which i have put some oil, uh, water and i'm going to heat that up allow it to come to a boil till then what we are going to do is just take little bit of oil grease your hands with little bit of oil and spread this it is going to be little bit of a mess what you can do is spread it up to make like your doklas so let's see if the water is boiling yes it has and i have also spread this mixture here on the thali so all we need to do now is steam this now to ensure that your katori doesn't move i've added a little bit of water inside this is a quick fix way of steaming when you don't have a steamer so what we need to do is now just cover and allow this to steam for good 8 minutes or till you can figure out that you know it's become a little dry and it can be cut into pieces so let us steam this for good 8 minutes 8 to 10 minutes or so so it's post 10 minutes our mixture has steamed so what we are going to do is carefully remove it out and what we are going to do is allow it to cool and once it's cooled what we will do is we'll cut it into strips or small pieces so what you can also do is shape them into small balls but what i'm going to do is just cut it into strips now usually there are times when what happens is ragi kind of tends to stick to your fingers if that happens do not worry you don't need to use oil what you should use instead is water and then it will not stick so as you can see this is not sticking so it's not a problem so all we are going to do is cut it into rough chunks and then just remove them at any point of time if i feel that it's going to stick just dab little bit of water now what you can also do is uh, many people uh will question that why did i steam it it just to ensure that it's cooked completely if you notice that i have not used uh, a lot of water in this recipe to uh, first make the batter and cook it into a dough so i wanted to ensure that this recipe is completely steamed completely quick uh, you know cooked so which is why i did that step now instead of that you can what you can also do is cook it up till you know it really uh reduces the moisture is like completely lost and then set it out on a plate in that case steaming is not required now that our strips are ready now all we need to do is make a basic tempering so for that i'm going to take around teaspoon of oil little more than that and once it's hot enough we'll add the rest of the ingredients a teaspoon of mustard allow it to crackle once that crackles we'll add the rest of the ingredients and goes the urad dal it to be quick little bit of jeera some green chilies for spice because we have not added we are not adding any masalas in this some curry leaves give it a quick mix use your flame add in the garlic i personally feel that garlic and uh, ragi goes very well the flavor goes very well like i told you before i don't mind adding it even to the raw batter while cooking it so we'll just allow that to cook a little now we'll add some hing water now we'll add these strips just be gentle and we'll just give this a quick stir we just want this to be evenly coated with the spices we'll just allow this to dry out as you can see it's sticking a little because it's been steamed and that's the nature of ragi so don't worry just use a spoon gently remove the pieces 
that's about it now if you feel the need to add salt you can add salt i feel that very little salt is required i'm going to add a dash and at the same time i'm going to add a bit of coriander stems again just for flavor that's optional i usually just coarsely crush it now we just want to uh, allow the ragi to soak up the oil that is used so let's just give it one stir saute it for around 30 seconds and post that our snack is ready to serve so let's just finish it we'll add a bit of coriander and switch off the flame that was quick So our steam kali mudda is ready. Now, as you can see, it's completely different from the most traditional form of the same recipe. So, do try out this mashup recipe and let us know whether you like it or not. I'm awaiting your feedback. You have to subscribe to India Food Network. Please don't forget. And until next time, it's Preeta signing off. Bye.